Hi, welcome to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends, and I'm Dee, and I have some friends here, theater right here, and um, again, Friday, and we're here, and hopefully you're going to enjoy this segment. We're going to have a really good time. We have a, a family today, and um, well, before we start, hey, Theta, how, how you doing? doing? I'm good. How, how was you? your week? Oh, very good. Thank you. How was your week? It was a week. It was good. Yeah, well, it was New Year's. <laughs> wow. You know, so here we are starting our new year, and um, it's, it's phenomenal, and well, Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I didn't do much. How about you? I relaxed. Yeah. Relaxed. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need that. Yes. So basically, that's what I did. I was supposed to go to church, but then I said, mm, maybe I just need to rest, and God will understand. You know, so well, I did the body that. Needs rest sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you do, and I didn't do anything the next day either. So I was like, I'm good. <laughs> so we had a good time. Good. Yeah, but today we have a family, and um, they've gone through a journey with their mama. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's really yeah. I can't wait. You know, because yeah. actually I met Miss Teresa a while ago. You know, but and we keep on like I guess we're kind of running with the same folks. So. Mm -hmm kind of cool you know yeah, and then cool. we just keep on running into each other so I said well come on share your story so and um, she's doing some things so we're gonna start with her son now so hi hi how you doing Kevin I'm good I'm good how are you very good very good now first time on your I thought I should have kind of like let you know about this but I forgot okay. but <laughs> but you know it is what it is but we always ask, because the show's name is Passion for Life, mm -hmm. you know, with you and friends, but, but <laughs> it's Passion for Life. So, I know you're youngin', mm -hmm. but what is your passion for life? Uh, my passion is for God and also um, helping people. Okay, excellent. And, you know, my career choice to be a neuropsychologist. Oh, so excellent. So, I like helping people and seeing the gratitude of people being happy. Okay, so right now you're in school? Mm -hmm, college, Philadelphia, college, Philadelphia University. Oh, smart, smart young man, too. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Very, what year are you in? Um, I'm a freshman. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So you're here for the holidays? Yeah, for the holidays, and then and back back to second semester. Okay, so how'd you do? I did good, 3.0. Oh, oh, excellent, okay. Very good, I'm impressed. <laughs> I can't expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> now, hello, Nikki. Hey, I met you. Yeah, you Just, did. Yes, and, and we clicked. Yes, we did. We did. So, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for having. supporting your your family. Yes. You know. Yes. So, Nikki, what's your passion? For life? My passion is helping people and making sure that um, God is God is um, rewarding. Like He'll reward me because of what I do for other people that nobody else doesn't see. Because right. God is number one in my life and anything that I do goes to Him. Okay. So my approval and everything comes to Him and then I know that I'm going on a straight path. That's a blessing. That's truly a blessing. And um, it'll keep you where you need to go and get you focused to where you exactly. need to go, definitely. Also being a, um, a daycare provider where I, you know, instill a lot into children okay. from the ages of six weeks to the age of 12 years old. Oh, wow. Okay, cool, cool. So that's a, it's a blessing all. Yeah. You know, it's a ministry. It's not even just about child care. It's a yeah. ministry. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, if you, they have the foundation, so you're giving them that foundation. That's so that's a really good right. thing. Especially yeah. if the parents in their home doesn't right. do the same. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's it's a real blessing. blessing. Okay, cool. Wow. Well, this is a theme here. <laughs> Because our, our actually show is all about awareness, education, and helping people. So we already started. Yes. 
Right. So we're just going to continue, continue with that. So, okay. And now I met Mr. Jack about, <laughs> what, two, week, two months ago or so? Very well, yes. Yes, and we scanned you. And you were actually really, really young, you know. But didn't think you were going to be on my show. So <laughs> <laughs> what's your passion for life? My passion for life has been radiated on me to evolve myself into leadership. Okay. And leadership first has come for me when I was blessed to be married over 35 years ago. Wow. And that's the head of the family. Mm -hmm. And as God has rolled me along the way, leadership has become more prevalent for my son to see how a good man can operate with one woman and how my job where I work at Steinway Pianos has elevated me to be a leader now in the union as well as being partial um, foreman and to be a leader in parts and to be a leader in my community as well as ministry. Mm -hmm. So I'm truly thankful for how God has evolved me mm -hmm. over the years to encapture and engulf leadership qualities from the anointing of God. Wow. So. This is you know. a very blessed family, I have to say. You know, so. No crying, okay? Okay. No crying. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the new year, I already did my crying. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's phenomenal. Yes. You know, that's phenomenal. And that's where, you know, you're giving your son your, and your daughter that, that leadership and that, that foundation because they need to have that foundation. Yes. And that's why they, who are, they are right now. So that's a that's blessing. A real blessing, truly, truly, truly. So, <laughs> and this is, this is the one, okay, Miss <laughs> Teresa. <Okay. laughs> Hi. You are the, the matriarch of the family. So I'm like, I have to say, well, the pa patriarch, hmm, yeah. you know, and he it's gave you a lot, your yes. egos, you know, and that's yes. such a wonderful thing, yes. you know, wonderful thing. Oh my gosh, you know, to have yeah. such a good man yeah. beside you, Hard even though find. he was a lot younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> no, just on our machine. On the machine. <laughs> on, the machine. On, the machine. on the machine. I'm the youngest. But <laughs> on the machine only. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> the internal age. Right. You know, but exactly. <laughs> but, you know, but the thing is, since you're here for the first time, yeah. you're going to have to ask about your passion, even now. Yeah. I know you have a big question. Yeah. What's your passion for? Well, my passion has always been to help people. Even from a little girl, you know, I've always wanted to be a blessing to somebody else, you know, because, you know, coming from, you know, uh, a dysfunctional family mm -hmm. and uh, being challenged you know, with private po poverty and going through social services and stuff like that, you know, kind of sparked my passion mm -hmm. that I wanted to give back, you know, to the community, give back to helping people because I saw, you know, God rest her soul, what my mom had to go through raising six kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what sparked my passion that I wanted to make a difference, okay. you know, in life mm -hmm. with whether it's a woman, a man, a a boy, a girl, you know, whoever it is, to make a difference. Right. So I guess that's why, you know, you hear from each one of us, you know, that this is the ministry that God has given us. And, you know, we do it in church, you know, we part of an outreach uh, program, you know, we do it in the community. My husband and I, my daughter, along with my son, we're advocates in the community through the Civic Association, you know, so we're well known, right. you know, right. for the ministries of health. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I should have looked you all up. You know? <laughs> I had no clue mm -hmm. what I was getting myself into. But you know what? Wow. Yeah. You know, but when I spoke to you the other day, I was like, because you know, we've encountered each other yes. a couple of times and what have uh -huh. you, but not really able to sit down and really, and really, talk. really talk. Right. Yeah. So, bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be talking. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
definitely be talking. Yeah. So I know you had some challenges recently. Yeah. And that's what we're going to focus on a little okay. bit too, you know. Mm -hmm. But whatever you want. Yeah. Within this one hour. Yeah. You know, because it goes so fast. Yeah. But we're going to really focus on your journey. Yeah. On how you have gone through. Yeah, breast um, cancer. Breast cancer. Yeah. And I was, you want me to start? Yeah, we can I was diagnosed. Um, August of 2008. Mm -hmm. um, went to the doctor for my normal mammogram and um, felt a little swelling on the left side of my uh, breast, but, you know, just thought it was sore from going through, you know, women PMSing and stuff like that. And um, the, the report came back fine, and, um, but I still wasn't feeling. Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling, you know, I still had pain on the left side. And um, long story short, I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. and um, he said, well, let's do a needle biopsy. Mm -hmm. Did a needle biopsy. The needle biopsy didn't show anything, so the doctor suggested that it would be best that it's out then in. Mm -hmm. Didn't think nothing of it. I said, okay, get it out. You know, nothing in my mind so about it. So you felt a lump? No, I didn't feel a didn't lump. Feel it felt like a swollen vein. Okay. It wasn't a lump at all. Okay. You know, because it, it was sensitive to the touch on, you know, with my forearm. It was mm -hmm. kind of sensitive to the touch. Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt. Oh. Not not hurt where I couldn't stand it, but it was sensitive. Yeah. I'll put it like that. It, it was, was sensitive. It was, it was something that you knew something was I knew quite something right. was because, you and know, women it. breasts do get sensitive mm -hmm. around that time of the month and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't that type of sensitive. It was more pinpointed in a particular area. Okay you know, that brought about a concern. Right, right, right. And um, that's when the doctor said, okay, the needle biopsy didn't show anything. So, you know, it's best to get the benign cyst. I knew it was a benign cyst mm -hmm. to get the benign cyst out so it wouldn't harden or turn to anything mm -hmm. else. as what the doctor said. Right, right. And I did that and, you know, went through and was recovering from the procedure. It was an in and out procedure. And about a week, you know, my husband and I went back to the doctor only for him to stop rambling off, you know, saying, um, well, the report came back and um, you have cancer and you have two choices. We can do a uh, mastectomy and then you go through radiation and chemo or then, you know, or you could have a lumpectomy. And when he said cancer, I blanked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my husband was sitting right there and he saw you yeah, know, yeah. the blank right, stare, right, right. the man was talking. It sounds like he was going wah, wah, wah. And only thing I saw was I heard cancer and saw my life yeah. just flash before my eyes. Right, right, this right. was after they, take the, they took the, um, the mass out? After they, they took the, um, right, what it was, once my husband calmed the, slowed the doctor down and said, wait a minute, you know, can't you see that my wife is like, you know, going through right yeah, now. You right. just said she has cancer. Right. We wasn't coming in there to hear yeah. that report. Right. I was coming in there to say when I could go back to work. Right. Right. And uh, was diagnosed with the cancer. And then he slowed down yeah. and explained that I did have a benign cyst, but behind it, yeah, behind it was the cancer. The benign cyst was 2.0 centimeters, and the cancer was 1.2 centimeters. Mm. So it was actually hiding behind, behind the, other the benign cyst. Yeah. 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 So in actuality, it was a blessing yeah. that it was taken yeah. out because had it not been taken out, it could have developed into oh, something yeah. oh, more yeah, severe yeah. and spread or right. God knows what else could have right, happened. Right, right. So I looked at it as devastated as I was. Mm -hmm. I looked at it as a blessing because I found out what was going on. But they didn't get it all at that point. They, no. They just had gotten the really the benign cyst at that Right. Point. So how did they determine that there was Well, I wasn't answer. going to use the doctor that did that removed the benign cyst. Mm -hmm. I spoke to my girlfriend who had went through cancer the year before. Mm -hmm and had to have a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to somebody that I knew, you know, knew the steps to take. Mm -hmm. And when I called 
And I explained to her, she told me, she said, get all your paperwork together, mm -hmm. get all your um, biopsy tests, get all your CAT scans, get all your mammograms, get everything together, mm -hmm. um, she said, and look for a uh, breast cancer specialist. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I did, mm -hmm. and through the hospital that, you know, mm -hmm. I work for, the North Shore LIJ mm -hmm. Health System, um, Dr. Marie Chen okay. was... The, the report that I got, you know, yeah. about her was just amazing. Right. You have and, to, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to do your you research. Do your research yeah, you just definitely. can't just go to any mm -hmm. old doctor. Yeah. You yeah. have to do your research, and you have to have testimonies yeah. of that doctor. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you know, definitely. and I mean, yeah. we I got testimonies to the point of the women that I spoke to, they had tears in their eyes mm -hmm. speaking about Dr. Right, Chen. Right. And stuff. when my husband and I went, not knowing what to expect, by the time we walked out of her office, I felt so calm, so yeah. relaxed. I understood the process. It wasn't as critical as I thought it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, he had started this journey, right. you know, going through breast cancer right. Right. and stuff. And uh, I've always been sensitive to somebody being diagnosed, but it's just a whole nother level when you're going through it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, and the toughest part for me really was telling my children. That's what I was going to say. Well, thank goodness your husband was there. Oh, yes. You know, when he were, they were able to share that with yes. him. Yes. So that was a real blessing. Yes. So how did you tell the children? Well, my daughter was working at the time, and, you know, my son was in um, elementary school. My son was in the seventh grade at the time. And um, I was nervous. I didn't know how to how they was going to take it and um i sat them down and no, no. oh i told i told nikki first okay, so and you. then and nikki kind of like just dismissed it you tell her what you did oh, okay well, um, <laughs> she called me she called me after she got the results from um, from the doctor she was like i have cancer quick i hung the phone up yeah, yeah, because, you know, she's always in a state of denial. Okay. You know, it's hard for her to believe stuff. So I, she called me back again. I hung up again. You really weren't ready for it. No. I was trying to yeah. see that. Yeah. Yeah. So she didn't call me back until I got home. I was like, so you would do this to me? I said, you're fine. I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to come back in a minute. So okay. we'll, we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and run Cockman, New York. And we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkman, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible 
um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope Someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. One point three million women are victims of physical assault by an intimate partner each year. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the majority of cases aren't reported to the police. Most people who are in an abusive relationship don't even know they're in one. The truth is, all abusive relationships boil down to one thing, control. How do you like it? My new dress. Are you out of your mind? You look like a prostitute. Yeah. We're not going out with you dressed up like that in public. But what am I supposed to wear? Wear something decent. You can't wear that out in public. We're going to be late. Get back in there and pick a different outfit. I'm going to go run some errands. I'll be back in 30 minutes. Please be ready, okay? Fine. I'll change. Fine. Uh... Abuse is not always physical, leaving wounds that are visible on the outside. Emotional abuse is just as painful, only these wounds are hidden on the inside. Are you out of your mind? You're crazy. You look like a prostitute. 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 Know that abuse is abuse, no matter what the form. Look at me. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Physical abuse scars the body. I just wanted to love me. But mental abuse scars the mind. What you just saw was an example of a relationship that is emotionally abusive. Nobody has the right to tell you how to dress or how to act. If someone really cares for you, they won't tear you down. They will build you up. How do you like it? Wow. You look great. Fantastic. But then again, you look great all the time. Thank you. I was hoping you'd like this my new dress. I bought it just so we could go out tonight. You look stunning. Thank you. But I think I'm going to take a sweater just in case it gets cold tonight. Great idea. I'm going to take one too. Let's go. All relationships are not perfect, but a healthy relationship is when two people bring out the best in each other and have each other's good in mind. Take your time to know someone instead of rushing into something. It is better not to involve yourself with an abusive person than to try and get out of a domestic violence situation. If someone is abusive to you and you need help, please call the Domestic Violence Hotline at one 800 799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-SAFE. They have highly trained experts available 24-7 who will speak with you confidentially and offer information regarding the unhealthy aspects of your relationship, resources, or immediate support for victims to find safety and live lives free of abuse. Domestic violence affects us all. It 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 affects us all.
सबको फर्क पड़ता है डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस Hi, welcome back to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends. And um, I'm Dee and all my friends. And we're having some serious conversation with some beautiful people and um, for the new year. So we'll get back to Teresa. Okay. Well, actually, Nikki. Oh, yes. Nikki. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Nikki. Yes. Your reaction. So you were. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really feel really about it because I didn't want to accept mm -hmm. that my mother had cancer. Right. Plus, I, my mother's strong. Right? Why'd she get this? Right. Right. But, yeah, it was dismissive to me. I didn't really think about it too, too, too often. I didn't, I didn't receive it. <clears throat> I didn't receive it. So. And I just started praying after that. About 37, about 27. I'm like, how old are you now? <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm about to say. You're about 27. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a real quick yeah. uh, mm -hmm. break. Yeah, because I'm, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we'll get, get back, okay? Okay. I'm here for Multi Medicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multi Medicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel, we treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Hi, welcome back to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends. We were having a little technical difficulties with the mic, so we want to just kind of get back to, to um, oh my gosh, I just went blank, Nikki, to get her story. So um, 
how she had to react with um, her mom's hearing what happened with her mom. I didn't receive it, so when she called me, I hung up twice. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess when I got home, I got the full, the full story from mm -hmm. then on. I still didn't receive it then. I just had to be there and keep keep yeah. the, keep her in prayer. That right. that was it. That's all I could do. Yeah. That's all I knew what to do. That's right. all I was taught to do. Right. You don't panic. You don't react. Just pray. Because right. I didn't understand it. She didn't understand it. This was new to us. So this was something that we really had to go to God about. Right. That's all. That's all with me. All right. So, Kevin, yes. how about yourself? Um, I was a little bit more open-minded. Okay. Um, even being like seventh, in seventh grade, mm -hmm. um, I was able to, you know, ask questions and see, you know, the severity of it. Um, I was still, you know, learning different things, so I just wanted to know what was going to happen and how she was going to be afterwards and everything mm -hmm. like that. So I was more open-minded. Okay. Well, then you found the right doctor. I found the right doctor. I end up having a lumpectomy. That's when they go in and the way that she explained it, like how you go in and scoop out a scoop of ice cream mm -hmm. is how they had to go in and she had to go around the parameter to make sure that where the cancer was mm -hmm. and even so many degrees, um, uh, centimeters from where the cancer was to just make sure she get everything right. and um, test my lymph nodes mm -hmm. while... You know, she had me open, and she tested for the lymph nodes, and that was a good thing because mm -hmm. if there's nothing shown in the lymph nodes, you know, you know that it really haven't traveled nowhere else right. in your body. So right. after she did the test and everything and saw that everything was okay and she got everything, you know, she, you know, closed me back up. Right. I thought that was it. I thought the only thing I needed mm -hmm. was um, radiation. Right. But when I went to the oncologist uh, for uh, chemo, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Chen had just told me I just needed to just go through the steps. But when he, uh, when I met with the doctor, he said that because everything on the test showed as a negative, it was a plus and a minus. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when, when it says positive, 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 uh, they could kind of pinpoint it. But when they say negative, 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 it's hard for them. I said, well, I thought negative meant good. Then there, nothing is there. Right, right. He said, yeah, it does mean good. He said, but then there is that, you know, 1% possibility that we might have missed something. So I didn't want to hear that. Nah. And um, yeah. I went by myself because I didn't think that right. it was going to be a big thing. And long story short, I ended up, I was there by myself when my husband should have been with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to receive that, mess, that, that information by myself, that I had to have chemo. And I had to have four cycles of it. But you know what? Did you really have to have it? You know, now, because of what I know now, mm -hmm. I don't think so. You know, because if 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 it's like if a chemical I, yeah, because it did more damage to me. That's what I'm not understanding. Because your doctor, Chan, she's the one who went in there, okay? right? And she's the one who determined right where it was. And you know, yeah, I, you know these doctors. I'm yeah. sorry, you know, yeah. I know actually, my mom just was. She had been diagnosed with um, lung cancer, mm -hmm. and it was just a small section. And right. It was just like right. just because she happened to be going in there, and it was a blessing mm -hmm. that she they found it. Right. And they took it out. They took a a portion, you know, right. of that lung exactly. out, you know, because they just wanted to be more sure. Mm -hmm. So, but she didn't have to have chemo. She didn't have to have any kind of even radiation. Right. Because they right. got it all. Yeah. You know. So yeah, and that's what I, yeah. I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. You I know, just, uh, now that I know what I know and, you know, meeting body mechanic and meeting Dr. Ray and mm -hmm. learning about holistic, you know, medication and 
other alternative treatments. Mm -hmm. Had I been more knowledgeable mm -hmm. at that time, I think I acted more out of Fair, yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah. you know, Definitely. my faith was there, but my lack of knowledge yeah, yeah. limited me in, you know, going, you know, another way. Right, right. You know, but then I look at it like this I had to go through that yeah. so that I could tell the story of it. Right, right, right. Because going through cancer. Going through chemo mm -hmm. is no joke. No, not at all. I truly applaud you because I, I found a lump while I was in the shower. Mm -hmm. And just from that, if you look at me, I start crying because I didn't know whether they are going to say, okay, let's just take the whole breast off or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I just happened to be going through doctors because a lot of them were very horrible. Mm -hmm. Bedside manner was terrible. So mm -hmm. I went through several doctors to mm -hmm. find find one that was really, really nice. Okay. And um, she even, the way she cut me, so you can't really tell, tell. Where, where the cut is to take it out. Right. But it happened to be benign, which I, I'm happy about. Yes. But, but just the whole process was really, really Yes, mind-boggling. Like it, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. You so know? you wrote a book. I wrote a book. And it, I, that was not my intention. Right. You know, because on my bed of affliction, yeah. you know, God told me to write a book, yeah. and I laughed. Yeah. I said, really? I can barely spell, and you want me to write a book? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a college graduate, 4.0 GPA. <laughs> but, you know, you know, when they made spell check, mm -hmm. it had my name on it. <laughs> and, um, you know, because I have a little self in me, my mm -hmm. pronunciation of words, you know, my kids get a kick out of teasing me of what I can and cannot say. But anyway, this was also therapy for me. Right, yeah. Because instead of letting my mind go all over the place, mm -hmm. yeah. I was able to focus in while my husband and, you know, daughter and son was at school and work, um, it, it gave me something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I wrote it out. And the good thing about it is by me going through it step by step, I was able to write the book just like that mm -hmm. and tell moment by moment, right. situation by situation. As I learned it, I wrote it, you right. know, wrote it down. So somebody that's going through it can definitely tell, yeah. you know, what it is. That's why I called the, you know, book The Enemy. Mm hmm in the inner me. Okay. You know, because not only is there an enemy out here mm -hmm. in the world, right. and he's the devil, you know, but the enemy that comes to attack our bodies, diseases and, mm -hmm. and different things like that. And knowledge is power. Yeah, definitely. You know, to prevent, you know, that's why your program mm -hmm. is so amazing. Yeah. You know, right. passion for life and the things that you talk about, about attacking the immune system mm -hmm. and strengthening the immune system, you know, to fight against these different diseases. We don't know where it's coming from. Is it in the water? Is it in the food? Is it in the air that we breathe? Is it in the lotion, the deodorant, like we was talking? Mm -hmm. You know, or there's chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. And when it's we, synthetic. Our body right. does not recognize. Right. And exactly. And so it's going to react to it. And it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Our bodies are actually the best protection to keep disease away. Yes. And so whenever you put something that's not supposed to be there, it's going to react. Right. And those reactions are causing disease. Exactly. So we have to make sure that we keep our bodies as as, right. as natural as possible. Right. So, you know, and it's scary because people just don't know this anymore. Right. You know, because... They're just eating the processed foods. They're eating all the things that are out there. And guess what? They're treating these these animals with all these hormones yes. and pesticides yes. and all kinds of stuff. Yes, and they're injecting them with all kinds of stuff. Where are they going? Where are they going to go? Right. So, this is what causes all exactly. these diseases, you know. Right, so we have too much hormones in our body, too much, you know, different things that's multiplying because exactly. of what the animals exactly. and the vegetables and the fruits, you know, are being injected with to grow faster, to produce faster. <laughs> and now we eat all of this stuff, and now we want to know why our bodies is going through an imbalance. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, and in some cases we feel fine. Mm -hmm. 
But then there's something going on in us that we have no knowledge of. Well, see, you were blessed that you listened. Yeah. To your body. You yeah. Because a lot of people will just ignore it. Yeah. And just keep on going mm -hmm. and say, well, no, everything's good. Right. Now, you know, in terms of that, that four, four, four cycles of, oh, why did you go to, you know, and, and this is just me. Why did you go to the oncologist at that point when you already had spoken to? Well, know? that was the process um, after going through the um, surgeon, the breast cancer surgeon, the next step was to go to the oncologist. Uh, the oncologist uh, regarding the chemo and then whether needed or not the next step will go for radiation that is the process when you're dealing with um, cancer whether you need it or not you're still educated and they still give their you I know my, opinion I didn't, I didn't and take stuff my like that yeah I didn't yeah, take my mom yeah. to the oncologist they yeah. said it was all gone I was like okay good yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know I, but you know that that one percent fear mm -hmm. yeah. you know and then the way that the doctor had explained it and like I said my limited knowledge yeah. you know and then when I look at it now because of you know going through it in the book I'm able to talk to other people women and men that goes through this and able to give them this information really check to see if mm -hmm. you need this mm -hmm. because of the resources now that I know. I know you. I know Body Mechanic. Mm -hmm. I know Dr. Ray. Mm -hmm. I know different people mm -hmm. that I can direct them to before they start to want to cut you and put poison in right. your body. Exactly. You know, exactly. the first week of chemo, mm -hmm. my hair fell out. Literally, I could peel it off. Like you peel an orange. Yeah, it's yeah, deadly yeah, chemicals. Yeah. I, I have read up on, on chemotherapy, and they said it's like, um, if it was to go on, on the floor, it's like you need hazmat suits. Yes. So why would you want to put that in your body? Exactly. And radiation exactly. is actually you burning yes. your body. So yes, I got, I got third degree burns. They had yeah. to put burn patches on me. Mm -hmm. You know, and by me having large breasts, it, as the, the radiation builds up in your body. You know, so I had one breast larger than the other. You know, but it, it, it's, it's just how it disfigures yeah, yeah, your, your yeah. body, what yeah. it does to your emotions, what it does to your appearance. You know, I wore yeah. turbans. Yeah. You know, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd look cute, bald-headed, had it, you know, perfectly shaped, you know, sweet, bald-headed. I, I really did look cute, but at the same time, you know, women, we love our hair, we love yeah. our eyelashes and our eyebrows, yeah. and I had none of that. Right. You know, okay. but this man right here loved me like I was his queen. Yeah. And stayed by my side or his queen. Yeah. every mm -hmm. step of the way. Yeah. I would not have been able to do it without my family. How and because he's so intimate, mm -hmm. he saw yeah. the yeah, worst. I could see, you well, know, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's still it very down. close. Yeah. You know, very. Yeah. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's the rapid deterioration in front of your eyes. Yeah. The man that I am, I face my enemies and I defeat them. Mm -hmm. This was the enemy that was battering yeah. me bad. Yeah. Because I seen my wife going through that by herself. Seeing the hair come out. Mm -hmm. Seeing the, the follicles not being able to reproduce. Mm -hmm. To see the crying in her eyes. I seen that. And I had to pray about that. I, I didn't look at my physical man side, mm -hmm. I had to put that on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And in, in her illustrious um, book where it distinctively, descriptively explains from tale to time, time to time evolving, I witnessed it myself. Mm -hmm. And it was a difficult battle that the devil beat me down. But you know what? I stayed with my faith. And I stayed in her corner. And I stayed relishing the love. The love that was inside of me is what kept me 
many men would have said, well, you know what? I'm out of here. True. But what, got, what led me is what the vows I took 36 years ago. In sickness and in health, I will be there in good times, and I will go through it in the bad times. Mm -hmm. And I witnessed it. I seen it. I experienced it. And I prayed about it. And a lot of issues and physical attributes was put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Because as I spoke to that oncologist, I debated with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I debated yes, with him. And I mean eye to eye and toe to toe. I said that these things are not needed. And I spoke to him about nat natural. But why didn't you all go to another, you know, why didn't, I, why, you know, because, okay, I'm sorry. No, but mm -hmm. this is now you where you, where you, you, you know, now of the education. Get a second opinion. Exactly. Third, third, yeah. Third, yeah. Four times. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I had to have a hysterectomy. Yeah. Um, two, two years ago. Yeah. Okay. And they, the, basically the doctors were on the, well, you know, your ovaries don't work, mm -hmm. so get rid of them, you know. I had a cyst in yeah. one of them that was like, at that point, at one point, it was 12 by 12. By the time they did the surgery, it was 15 by 15. Mm -hmm. So it was huge. Okay. Yeah. But the other one was there, and I'm like, well, can we save that? Mm -hmm. And they're like, you don't need it. It's okay. You, you know, it's, 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 why? Because it's not their body. And I'm like... Well, because if it's good, yeah. I'd just rather have it. <laughs> right. How about that? Right. It's like, I'd it's rather fine. have it. You yeah. know, so, because I know there's like different strains, you know, trains of, of thought. Yeah. Because the thing is, you know, just a little bit, I know it's not functioning like it used to. Right. You know, it's not right. giving me the estrogen like it used to. Right. But it's giving me something. That's right. Okay. So I'd rather have reason. that something. Exactly. I went to four doctors until I found one doctor that said, if it's good, we will keep it. Okay. And I was like, thank you. Right. He gave me that option. That's right. the only thing. Okay. I wanted that option. Right. Okay, they could not save it. Right. Because of the, it was fused to the wall. Yes. But the thing is the option. Right. Exactly. You know? Yes. So now you know now that you I know. have to go yes. for a second opinion. Yes. And a third and a and fourth. The first, yeah. doctor, third and a fourth. the first doctor wanted to extract the whole breast. Yeah. And the way that he was talking, I, I had to intervene and say, wait a minute. I said, were well, you reading a script yeah. for body, re body parts removal? Mm -hmm. Right. I said, where's your sensitivity? Yeah. Right. I yeah. said, you better tone down. Yeah. And right. then he like, okay. And yeah. then he, he slowed it down. And, and Dr. Chen at the time was a nationwide mm -hmm. um, breast cancer specialist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she reassured me first. Right. She reassured me first as we sat. And we, I, 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 she, I learned everything along the way. Mm -hmm. And she reassured me. And she did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Because the first doctor, he wanted to, he, his diagnosis was, oh, let's, Take the whole thing off. Yeah. Attitude. Yeah. yeah. Like, and yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. This isn't you know, like a it's, meat it's, shop where you could just take out breasts off and maim us. You mm -hmm. know, if it was but, his body, but he you would have had a the confidence point. in right. her. Right. That's why. And she said, no, you probably just need a little radiation. Right. Blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I would have gone back to her. I did. I did go back to her. And she said, you know, um, this doctor is a specialist. And if he's suggest, suggesting it, I'm not going to tell you not to do it, you know, yeah. if he's recommending it. And because she, you know, she gave, me that assurance. gave me that assurance. Is this the same doctor that you wanted to go, let, let, let's take it outside with? No. <laughs> take it outside. No. 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 We had left him. Oh, yeah. For the first surgery. Yeah. We, we. Okay, so. Because that, yeah. he, he was actually a little malpractice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because technically, they should have had a person there 
to do a biopsy right at that point. They're right. supposed to always have a pathologist exactly. there. At, exactly. Exactly. open you up. They're right. Supposed to be able well, to, he you know, did. They did the biopsy. That's how they was able no, to find right. out. at that time. Because when they... Oh, when they did, instead of doing the needle yeah. biopsy. No, no, no. To, when they did that... When they took it, it out. out. Right. They were supposed to have a... Because I know I could not... I had gone to um, my third doctor. Mm -hmm. And the third doctor said he could not do the surgery because right. there was not a pathologist at that hospital. Right. So you would have to have a pathologist right. when they're taking the Well, they out. did. That's how I knew yeah. the size of the benign But they did it after the fact. Right. They, they didn't did. do it while you were on the table. Right. Right. You understand Exactly. That? They did it when I had to go it. to Dr. No, Chen. You supposed exactly. You're supposed to be, they supposed to have done that right. determination while right. you were on the yeah. table. You're right. right then and there. Right. Exactly. You know? Because it wasn't supposed to be like, oh, now, a week later, yeah. oh, well, we just got the pathology, this, that, and that. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. there was definitely some malpractice yeah. with that. Yeah. You know, you know so you, I learned through trial and <laughs> error, you know, that's why I keep saying knowledge is power. Yeah. And even, you know, today within the last, um, you know, going to Dr. Ray today and finding out more information, you know, on how to take care of my body. Uh, you know, nutrition-wise, you know, different techniques. You know, you 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 learn more, right. and I, I got to the point where I've just fed up. Well, now, and because we're coming to our hour, yeah. Um, do you have you changed your diet? Yes, I have. You know, yes, I have. What have you done to change your diet? Well, I like point? to know me. I like oh. the what you. Yes, I I, <laughs> I do like that. Okay. Uh, you know, it gives me energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know that it helps with mm -hmm. my immune system. Mm -hmm. You know, I stay away from a lot of, you know, dairy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, not much of a meat eater mm -hmm. other than fish mm -hmm. and You got to be careful of that, too. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. You got to yeah. be careful of everything. everything. <laughs> you know, so, really you know, I, I stay away from processed food. My system okay. really don't even process it. Are it you, really are don't. Are you going with the organic foods more so? More so, okay. yeah. Okay. I have to. My yeah. family okay. will tell Very you good. because and I sugar, just can't. No sugar? Uh, well, you know, I'm weaning away from okay. that. I know. I'm weaning away. Okay. I'm weaning away. Okay. I'm weaning away. Okay. 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 from the sugar. No, but you know what? That's very detrimental. I know. Yeah. I you know. know, that's the most detrimental thing. And I know yeah. myself also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am an addict. <laughs> Truly a sick sugar addict. Yeah. But the thing is, once we get that sugar off of us, yeah. mm -hmm. we will do so much better. Yes. You know, it's, yes. it's just natural sugar. Yeah, and feed happen. off our own yes. natural yes. energy. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. So that's what we, we definitely have yes. to do. Yes, most so. definitely. <sighs> sugar kills. <laughs> There's something that I do every morning. What is that? I drink a quart of water. Okay. Before water. I eat anything. Okay, now we got to also be concerned about the water, too. Yeah, yeah um, that is true. Because when I was looking, you know, because I pulled up some stuff about, you know, what are the possibilities right. of why the cancer would come. Yeah. It's environmental. Yes. The it's, water. It's, it's the, the food. Fluoride. It's, it's all you know, the all the chemicals, yeah. all the chemicals, you know. Yeah. And then, of course, now we got to try to see what can we do to prevent it. So we exactly. got to go with the natural, so the phytochemicals. Right. And, and that was the basic thing. Everything phytochemicals, which right. is mostly exactly. natural foods yeah. and, and as, as less cooked as possible. Right. Because the way you cook your food, too, exactly. and like I had told yes. you all before, mm -hmm. you know, grilling, fast cooking, all that yeah. stuff is no, no good. Yeah. Because the AGEs, this yeah. is what we were talking about with the noni and, what yeah. you, and it brings it down. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to make sure that that sugar compound mm -hmm. with the protein does not go in your right. body at exactly. all. You just, so you don't want it so, to feed it because right. it'll feed that cancer mm -hmm. yeah. and make yeah. it grow. So, oh my yeah, gosh. It's you know, it's, it's a, a big lot. Turn. You know, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. To live right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to fight. You got to fight. You have to and, fight. And, and to live you got to fight, and then you have to do the education. Yes, you, know? you do. You, you know what you really guys do. can do in the morning too? In the morning, the first thing in the morning, you can get some some Briggs vinegar. Uh -huh. It's organic. It, it has mother in it. Uh huh. And drink a tea, teaspoon of that with, with some warm water. Yeah. That's what your mother, my that's mother his, his mother does yeah. that. Vinegar yeah, it's good. Vinegar and water. The Briggs, the Briggs. That's, that's distilled what I water. Oh, the Briggs, the Briggs vinegar. Distilled. So okay. you're doing the distilled water. Yeah. Every morning. Okay, excellent. Okay, good. Every morning. Okay, because we don't want, 
It's like, what kind of water do you want? Yeah. And then they're talking about washing. Washing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You, you kind of have to be careful of, yeah, you, what, what you wash up with. Kevin they, knows. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What, what do you know? No, because um, when I was in my, uh, my psychology class, mm -hmm. I also learned that um, we were doing um, certain, um, certain uh, case studies on environmental disorders mm -hmm. and how that would affect our bodies mm -hmm. and different psychological disorders that could affect uh, environmental um, factors. And, you know, we found out that, you know, there's so many chemicals in the sewage, the sewage um, pipes that when it transfers to the water that we wash in, it's more polluted with more mm -hmm. bacteria and viruses and everything. And we don't even know, and they don't tell us, and it, uh, it's very detrimental. It's a scary world. Very, very <laughs> That's what I can say. It's a very scary world. <laughs> so there's filters that we can put on, and I know I, I'm going to be investing in something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, yeah. It, yeah. It, it has to. It's just, wow. You have you know, to protect you, yourself. And you look at, like, people that were living so much more wholesome. Yes. Because you know, I have a grandmother who lived yeah. to 101. Wonderful. And I had a grandma that lived to 110. Wow. But of course, they they cooked their foods yes. natural. Yes. And they did everything that was supposed yes. to be done, you know, and they didn't have all the chemicals and they didn't exactly. have all the hormones and they didn't have all the pesticides. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yep. That's right. And then you have to, and we, we all now know mm -hmm. what we put on our skin. Yes. What we wash our hair. Even yes. what we wash our wash dishes. Our dish yes. yes, that's right. You know, so that's it's like right. all that stuff. Yeah. It has all these chemicals. We gotta go. Yeah, everything is chemicals. Oh my gosh. Everything. Mm -hmm. yep. And all of it affects the cancer. Yes, All it of it affects the immune system. All yes. Of, all these diseases, all these yeah. autoimmune diseases, yes. all these things that are happening yeah. to our bodies. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. So yes. much. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, I know they're going to come soon. And you're going to have your own show. I'm good, working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah, we're going to yeah. give it a try. Yeah, we're going to try. I think it's one of those. Yeah, it's going to be heart to heart. Heart to heart. And oh. we're going to be talking about, you know, marriage, relationship. Okay. And stuff like that. And I know you want to oh. do, do another mentoring. You know, talking of uh, mentoring women. That mm -hmm. that's that's another one of my passion. Right. Is um you know working with women and you know mentoring them and dealing with all different type of issues that women go through and how to handle it and you know have resources to deal with certain you know, situations and circumstances, you know, because as we know, women, we go through a lot. Mm. Yes, we do. We go through a lot, and some women are stronger than others, and sometimes our, our strength end up becoming um, a weakness, weakness instead of it being a strength because we think we're so strong, we can't open up, we can't talk, we can't release, you know, because we have to be this strong black woman. You know, and um, a lot of times we hurt ourselves mm -hmm. because we prevent ourselves from getting the help and the resources that we need. That's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah, I got a lot to say. Lot well, to you know, say. I knew <laughs> there was going to be no issue <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Did not say that. I was like, well, actually, I told, I told Miss Alicia, Miss Chella, uh -huh. Miss Chella, all I have to do is sit back. <laughs> I don't have to do nothing right now. <laughs> it's all good. And with the family and everything, I know Nikki. Mm -hmm. and Kevin, you know, and Kevin didn't want to talk anything. Yeah, right? but he's, he's very knowledgeable. <laughs> so, but it was it was like phenomenal, you yeah. know. So, but I know you're gonna take my show over on the on, on the thirtieth. Yeah. So you know, have your hour. I'm uh -huh. gonna have to tune in. Uh -huh. <laughs> Check you all out, you know. Oh, boy. See how it goes, we're going to be on that side, right? We're going to be over here. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, I think you're a natural, so it won't be any issue. Okay, with that. I'm going to give it a try. Yeah, well, you know, that chill in that body mechanic. Oh, my God. God. I'm get that. <laughs> I'm gonna get that. <laughs> so what's the name of your organization? Your um, woman's organization. I don't have, you know, I'm just doing it. I do a lot of volunteer work. I go into women 
homes, you know, into women programs and transitional homes and stuff like that. And, you know, talk about, you know, low self-esteem, you know, different issues that women go through. And, I mean, every nationality I have spoken with, you know, through ministry, you know, not only am I an evangelist, I'm also an, I'm an elder, wow. you know, in the church. So, you know, I wear a lot of hats. I'm very humble because, you know, I'm a servant of the Lord. You know, and I don't brag about, you know, title or position. I, God just placed me in different places to be a blessing. Right. Amen. You know, and that's what it's... a non-profit organization? Or I've been thinking about it, yes. I think you should yes. do it. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. I am You're definitely... Phenomenal. Do it. I am yeah. working on it. Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, that's, that's a dream. Yeah. And I'm going to put it to action. Now, with your book. Do you have it self-published, or you had it published through a, um, a publishing company? It was self-published. Okay. I did have an editor, you know, to help me, you know, put it together, but I did, okay. I did the work. And I you did have the work. available people? Yep, it's on Amazon. It's okay. on um, Barnes & Nobles. Um, you could download it on the Kindle or your Nook, um, and you could get in touch with me at author Teresa Hart, you know, gmail.com, okay. and um, order it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll definitely have to have to get one and have ordered. Okay. You know, autograph. What is it? Autograph. Yeah. Because you know, if I had known, I would have read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Thank so, you. So I, I have to thank you so so very much. Thank you for coming out. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's, it's you know. Yeah. And um, when you have your show, you have to invite me on. Your okay, show. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you'll, you'll have to come back again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Definitely, you'll have to come back again because we still only it. just touched. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah touched you only surface, touched the you know? surface. Yeah. Because the owl goes just like that. Yes, I you see. Know? It Most really definitely. Does. But it, it's all about just sharing. Yeah. And being real. Yeah, that's what and it that's is. It, you know. Yeah. And hopefully, somebody will have been able to take that and yes. and utilize. Yes, definitely. You know, some, something that we get, you gave. Yes, so that's yes. A blessing. Yes. You know? Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So I think we're almost done. Hey guys, tell me what's up. <laughs> 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 so, but um, and we'll be back next week. Uh huh. But we're only doing next week. Okay. My group. Okay. And then okay. I'm going to let you all do your thing. Okay. You know? Okay. So, congratulations, guys. Thank yeah. you. Are, are you Thank both you. coming on as heart to heart? Yes. yes. Husband yes. and wife. Yes. yes. Husband yes. and wife. Yes. 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 Beautiful. Uh -huh. Beautiful. <laughs> and I know the children will be there too. Yeah, they will. Well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. He'll be right going okay, back okay, to okay, college. Okay. 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 okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> no, she'll, she'll be producing everything. She'll be setting it out and letting everybody know to look yeah. at her mom and dad. You know, to look at the preview of our show. I'm, no, I'll be doing everything else. Her hair, her makeup. Uh, oh, beautiful. Oh, that's right. okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, make sure she's okay, Miss Nikki. Look who's here. <laughs> so, thank you again. Thank and you. thank you again for thank joining you. Passion for Life. <laughs> I just love with some life with Dean and friends. Okay, have a great one. Okay. Happy New Year. <laughs>